Well, hey, fish heads, welcome back. We are going to do a spray session today, and as promised, I have the Strike King Red Eyed Shad. I've got the eyes removed on it, and it is the blue and chrome. So it's got a lot of bling to it already. We're going to use that as a primary base, but we're not going to be using it specifically all of it. I've netted off with, this is from the produce department, this is a garlic bulb holder, and it's got smaller um, scaling, but it is real stretchy. So you'll notice that I've got quite a few of these um, alligator clips attached to it. And I've got it stretched pretty tightly because it will kind of spring back on you. And then I've put it back into the helping hands. So the first thing we want to do with this lure, now that we have it all set and ready to spray, is hit this with some pearl and not some opaque white. I have got pearlized white, Createx loaded into the chamber, it's 5310, and we're getting ready to shoot that. Today's pattern is brought to you by Travis up in Maryland who had requested a menhaden. Now menhaden are very similar to shad, there's a couple of differences and there's also a couple of areas on there that we want to concentrate on, one of which being extra dots, and then also there's a little bit more of a um, transparency to the skin and the scaling of that fish. So especially when they're being chased or they're distressed or they're in a striper's mouth or about to be eaten by a striper, um, they get a little bit pale. So we're gonna concentrate on that, but we are using just the, uh, the background here of this chrome and blue for our prime. Now this is just a pearl white Yep, got the roll up open today. And all I want to do is kind of give that a good coating. And on the belly as well, there's a little area in this belly where my covering doesn't stretch to. I want to give this a really good heat set. And then we're going to come back and give it a second layer of this, just to mute down our blue and chrome. We still want it as a background, but we just want to barely be able to see it. Run that all the way out give it another good heat set. I'm going to do that off camera. And since I've already added the photo up top and we got right into this spray session today, I'm just going to kind of go through it quickly. It's not a very difficult pattern to achieve, but it's a really cool pattern. I'm adding just a couple of drops of pearlized black. And we're adding that into the, the face area. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to my, um, my updates and stuff like that, but I always recommend shooting pearls at a higher rate PSI. So we're, we're coming out right around 40. And that's just going to help you guys get this shot a little bit quicker with lots less clogs. And then I'm just going to kind of bring that over the back and then just let that run out. On to that, I want to do just a little bit of pearlized magenta where those red old Strike King gill striping pieces are. Just kind of give that a little bit of a cover. We don't need that 
in a whole lot of places. And then along the back tail edges, I'm adding a little bit of iridescent yellow and all of these have shimmer to them. All the colors that I'm using today are very shimmery. So now we have that kind of, as the fish is going through the water, that's pretty much what you would see. Maybe just a little bit of yellow on the nose. And then I'm to that, we're moving through this fairly quick because it's a fairly easy, easy one to do. I'm adding just a little bit of the black magenta. And I'm going to bring that over the top, kind of mute that black down a little bit. This is where I'll remove this top. And then just add a pop to the eye. Now you might see this is just a little bit too dark, but that's okay. We're coming over this again over top of these colors with some pearl white again. Just enough to cover the whole bait and that really lightens it up a good bit. Now we want to get a really good heat set on that. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but every time I've heat set, this little area right here where I could not get a good fit on this has started to, to come up just a little bit. I'm okay with that. Um, the belly is going to be a silvery white anyways, and we're getting just about ready to take this off because we are, um, once we do this, going to come back with a little bit of opaque pearlescent from Com Art and just mute down what you'll see as the chrome that's left over. We're going to mute that down with a little bit more pearlescent. And then we're going to add our detailing in. So this should look pretty decent. There's our scaling. And you can see that blue underneath, which is what we wanted. Very cool. I've got some Com Art, some opaque pearlescent. I'm going to add eh, about a third of a chamber full. So we want to give it a good spritz. Lighten it up just a bit more. But you still want those colors. We're looking for that shine, that chrome. And now we've got something that I'm pretty happy with as far as the shading goes. And then just come over just a little bit with about two drops of that detail black magenta. Just over the top and the very edges of the back on this bait. Also going to add to the belly area. Now I'm not, you'll notice that I did not clean this chamber out because I want that pearl to kind of mix in. I've got two drops of reduced opaque white that I'm just going to come and bring along the belly and all that's going to do is just help to define and you can still see the colors through that and you can see that pink you can see that bluish yellow and heat set off camera the very next thing we're going to do and I know I spend a lot of time using cotton swab or cotton q-tips to make our um, our shad dots on the patterns that I do. This time we're going to be using the airbrush to do it. 
we're going to bring our pressure way down and from the very beginning of the spray sessions on this channel I've promoted making sure that you practice on paper first so we've got a level that I like you want to make sure your dots are consistent and what I like to do is practice making a grid and what that does is it gets you used to laying down little spots in line and it's just basic control especially when you have a top feed and you can't exactly see what you're doing you're kind of eyeballing this from the side but you're also making sure you know exactly how close you can get and how dark you should get and how far you should pull this trigger back I don't know if you guys can see this on camera but there is a defined area right here at the gill plate where I can come right behind it and drop down that shad dot and there you have it we're gonna do the same thing on the other side in the exact same spot because these are all pressed the same And there you go. While we still have black in the chamber, I um, kind of dipped it in the whole way and I've got a pretty decent amount loaded onto the brush. But if you're looking at this pattern, you notice that the one specific difference on Menhaden is that they have several dots. So we're just going to add that in. So this pattern on here does not have to be a hundred percent specific to each side just kind of remember how many you put on the other side so on here we got two four six seven and I've got five and then do a couple back here six seven now we're starting to look like an actual menhaden now the Atlantic menhaden has silver eyes so all I'm going to be doing today I'm using 8.5 millimeter eyes there are fish skull living eyes in the ice pattern and we've got a drop of glue there's the first one and it should slide down in there perfect fit Red-eyed shad eyes are always big. And I think they use a 7 or a 7.5, but it will fit up to an 8.5 millimeter eye. And there you go. Beautiful fit. Well, let's look at clear coating. Gonna snip off two fairly long pieces of wire get those about the same size and a tail drip wire and I, it's been a while since I've shown this I think the last time I showed dipping a lipless it was on the mystery tackle box crappie spray and I demonstrated that on a Jenko out of the mystery tackle box when I repainted it so it has been a while. I think that was last year, maybe. So you can see that I've just kind of fashioned my own by wrapping it around the tip of these needle nose. The next thing I'll do is come in here, crimp this down on the top, and then bend it in the shape of an L. And you can see where I'm going with that. Uh, well you want to make sure that you get these on the top moving in the same direction so just that's the one thing you want to make sure that both of those are going in the same direction when you hang it or it's going to be a pain in the butt and bend that one up so now you have two 
and you can dip it in like that or sometimes I'll actually use the tail drip wire to dip it. On this I don't think I'll have to but sometimes when they're shorter can hang it like that and just hold on to this tail drip wire and dip it in like that. But before we dip it in clear coat, a couple more things. I want to sign it, but I also want to kind of do a walk around on this just to kind of show you that we have still used the original attributes on this bait to help make this what it is. So you can still see a little bit of that, that blue chrome in the background and that silver chrome underneath of it. It still has quite a lot of pop to it. It's very shimmery because we used all pearls on this paint and we shot those at a higher rate, uh, 40 PSI to be specific. So you can get away with doing that and it comes out pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this turns out. I can't wait to show it to you when it's finished up and dry on the clear coat, but let's go ahead and dip that into KBS. Now because there's plenty of KBS in here and I've got plenty of room to bring this down, we're just going to bring you down like that and we'll show you. There we go. Make sure I've got you guys in frame. Just do a straight dip in, slow dip out. Let that kind of do its thing. There we go. Get them both heading in the right direction. Put that tail drip wire in. We've got our scrap piece we can just move under here. Make sure that that drips down that tail drip wire. Drop this off and set this on. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is your Atlantic Menhaden concept by Travis in Maryland. He's a striper fisherman. And uh, we all know that it's one of the striper's favorite food, if not favorite food. Bring you guys in one last time for a good look, top to bottom. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things today. Thanks for hanging out with me on the channel, and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.